For NHL 19, Franchise Mode got a complete overhaul. In this video, we are going to be going over the new features for Franchise Mode this year, including some screenshots and some information that have not even been released yet. The guys over at EA helped me out by getting this information and these screenshots, so big thanks to them. There's a lot to cover, so let's get into it. Now, a little over a week ago, I was in Portland for the NHL 19 Adidas event. I got to play the game for a few hours, and I dived right into franchise mode. I didn't want to play any games. I wanted to strictly see franchise mode because I heard about the new fog of war system and the new scouting system and I had to try it out. So everyone else was grinding hut games and playing ASHL. I was in the corner. I got my own Xbox and I was just grinding some franchise mode. So there's a lot to cover. So let's start off with the biggest and the best, which is going to be the new fog of war system and obviously the new scouting system. So right away you can assemble a team of up to 20 professional scouts to scout leagues all over the world. So the SHL, the Liga, all over the NHL. You got the CHL, which includes the Quebec Major Junior League, Ontario Hockey League, obviously the Western Hockey League. And then you can go over to Germany, Austria, Korea. You can basically go anywhere. And you can hire and fire these scouts at will. Now what's really cool is as the franchise mode progresses, players will retire. And you can see here that as these players retire, they'll want to become scouts. So David Clarkson, Brian Gionta, to Andy Green, Roberto Luongo, they're all available to be hired for your team to be a professional scout. You can see Brooks Orpik retired and immediately I wanted to get him to, on a contract to be a scout so we offered him uh, a little over $100,000 a year for five years to be a scout. You can see his overall is B-. minus. Now each individual scout is going to have individual evaluation abilities so this Jordan Tuber guy looks like he's a pretty good scout. He's got B's and B- minuses across the board so you're probably going to want to hang on to that guy. And now each individual scout is going to have region familiarity. So you wouldn't send Jordan Tubert to a place like the AHL or the Canadian Hockey League. Looks like where he really excels is in Europe, Russia, and Scandinavia, and a little bit in the NHL Pacific Division. But for the most part, you're going to want to keep that guy in Europe. So as the franchise mode goes on, scouts will get less familiar with areas, they'll get more familiar with areas, so the scouts are forever expanding, which is really cool. So you're always going to want to check back and say, okay, well this guy's pretty good in Europe, so I'm going to keep him there or you know he's kind of losing interest in Europe he's gonna move more over to the USA West so you can really send scouts wherever you want another thing that's really cool is that your scout will actually recommend which player they think you should take at the draft not necessarily the best player available so for example if you're the Edmonton Oilers obviously everyone knows they need defense so say they miraculously win the draft lottery once again no god please no 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 no! But say they do, and there's a top line sniper going first overall. Your scout might say, yeah, he's great, but you know, maybe have a look at this guy who's ranked third or fourth by central scouting. You know, he's the big two-way defenseman that you really need, so maybe trading down would be the best option. CPU scouts will do that as well. They'll be targeting certain players throughout the year, and they'll either want to trade up or trade down, depending on where that player ends up in the draft. So as you can see by this screenshot here, teams are throwing picks all over the place they want to move up they want to move down to select a certain player that they've been scouting throughout the entire year throughout the course of the year you'll be getting central scouting updates for the upcoming draft so you're gonna see they're gonna see the central scouting rank and you're gonna see your scout that says where they think they should be going in the draft which is pretty cool your scouts are also going to let you know players to stay away from and players to go get which is called gems and busts obviously so as you can see our scout Nyquist he's saying stay away from Ackerman do not go after him him. One thing that I'm so stoked on is going to be that you have the ability now, finally, to see junior stats. You can see in the draft what that particular player did in junior. So you can see here, Alexis Lafreniere is supposed to be the next one. You can see 58 games played in Ramuski, 37 goals, 57 assists, so he is well over a point per game. You can see the central scout ranking, obviously number one, and looks like our scouts are pretty smart. They have him at number number one as well. Another thing that's really, really cool, just the small touches like this really bring franchise mode to be the best game mode in my opinion, is personality traits and similar styles. So our scout has been looking at this Matthias Bjorkstrand guy, and our scout says that he would mesh well in any locker room, has a very well-rounded personality. So that's good news, you're going to want to go after this guy. Similar style, Joe Thornton, which is really, really cool. 
You can see here that Popov has a similar style to Nicholas Backstrom, and he's a very passionate person but gets emotional at times. He's driven to win. Another one here, similar style to Alex Petrangelo. Now, when I was in Portland, I went through a few drafts, and one time I drafted a Finnish guy first overall, and his player comparison, Timu Solani, so that's pretty cool. So let's talk about Fog of War. What the hell is Fog of War? Well, Fog of War is something that is going to change franchise mode, for me anyways. So at previous drafts, you could see the overalls of the player that you're drafting. You can see at the draft here, you don't see the overall. So Vancouver Canucks picked a Fenisankov first overall. Colorado had the second and the third. Obviously, one of those is the Ottawa pick. Thank you, Matt Duchesne. But you can see their medium elites. You can see the binoculars as well. So they've been scouted. You can see they're the, they're the bold binoculars, so they have been scouted, but we don't know their overall. Now, in order to see the second and the third overall pick to unlock their overall, you're gonna have to send your Central Division scout out to Colorado to scout these specific players. And then you'll get a better understanding of their overall, their personality traits, similar style, all that kind of stuff. Now, what about the player you just drafted first overall, a Finisankov for the Canucks? You wanna see what his overall is. You have to play him during preseason, that's gonna unlock his overall and your scouts are going to scout the hell out of him obviously they're watching the preseason games and then you'll get to see what kind of overall what personality traits you know is he going to mesh well in the locker room personality traits really tie into team chemistry if your team chemistry is high you're going to be winning games if it's low you could actually lose games and you don't want your team chemistry to be low before people would just skip over the preseason and it wouldn't even be anything this time you actually have to set your lineup for your rookies to go into the preseason and then that will unlock their overall and their potential and all that kind of stuff and again this can be tweaked you can tweak your fog of war to however you like I think fog of war is really going to hit home for the hardcore players to set your lineup for uh, preseason games to see the rookies I think that's awesome for me being a hardcore franchise guy just that little thing is just makes it that much more fun it makes it feel like you know you're actually behind the scenes as a GM now fog of war also ties into players that you want to go acquire via trade so you can see on this screen here that Brady Shea, he has the bolded binoculars with four notches. That means, you know, everyone around the NHL basically knows what you're getting with a player like Brady Shea. And that goes the same for Connor McDavid, Ovechkin, Jack Eichel, John Tavares. You know who those players are. So there's really nothing to hide. Now, just to let you guys know, these ratings are not final. In the final release of the game, the ratings will be different. But for this video, this is what I had. It's not the final release of the game. But for a player, you can see like Philip Heidel down there, his overall is a 71 and it's grayed out binoculars. So you can see that his overall is a 71, but if you were to send your scout out to go scout him, that overall and that trade value could jump up. He could be a 79, an 80. It's really all about scouting. So if you want to target a particular player, send your scout to that area, send your scout to go watch some Rangers games, and he's going to give you a more accurate representation of what Philip Heidel is. Now, when I was in Portland playing the game, I got a lot of trade offers and I got a lot of trade offers that kind of made me think, why would this team be offering me this trade offer? For example, two or three times I had the Arizona Coyotes offer me Alex Goligoski and like a fourth for Bo Horvat. And I was like, what? Why would you ever offer me a trade like that? I would never accept that. And then I found out the teams rank players differently. So Arizona, they thought very highly of Alex Goligoski. They thought he was a top two, top four guy. So they thought very highly highly of him. Now for me, that trade makes no sense to trade for Alex Goligoski for Bo Horvat. But for Arizona, they seem to think he has a lot of trade value. So why wouldn't they offer me that? They want to cash in. So I got a lot of trade offers like that. I also got a lot of trade offers for picks. A lot of people trying to move up and down the draft. I also got a lot of salary cap dumps. So there's players trying to offer me, you know, guys like David Clarkson or whatever, just players that have crazy contracts, Dion Phaneuf, Milan Lucic. I got a lot of those trade offers. I believe I was offered Lucic for a third, just straight up, no salary cap retention whatsoever. So there's going to be a lot of more realistic trade offers coming your way. Throughout the year, there's just a decent amount of trade offers. There's not just a bunch at the trade deadline. It's really spread out throughout the year. But in the month of the trade deadline, usually March, there is quite a few more trade offers. 
you're definitely going to want to scout a player before making a trade. You want to make sure that the binoculars are bolted out. You're definitely going to want to scout a player before pulling the trigger on any moves. On draft day, you're going to be seeing a lot of picks be traded, teams moving up and down the draft, trying to select players that they've scouted throughout the year. So maybe they see a guy in the third round and they want to move up to select him. They're going to try to make a trade to move up into the third round to take that player that they've been scouting for the whole year. Another example of a trade offer I got was a second for Brandon Sutter and that was from Colorado. So obviously the Av scouting staff had Brandon Sutter ranked very high. Obviously I accepted that. I probably would have accepted like a third, but to get that salary cap off my team and to a team that kind of needed a player like Brandon Sutter, a couple more really cool things is now that career stats will now be generated throughout the entire 25 years. Last year and years prior, it only showed 10 years of stats. So either you'd have to track them on your own or wait till that player retired. Now you can go through the previous 25 years or however long that player played for and you can see all of their stats. You can now search by specific player which is pretty cool you don't have to go around and maybe you lost a player to free agency and you wanted to see where he signed you're not going to have to go and check through every single lineup you can just go to the player search search that player and it's going to show what team he plays for what overall all that good stuff. One minor detail I thought was pretty cool is now that the main screen shows the last 10 games of each team and it also shows the home arena again a super small thing Thing, but in my opinion, the small things are what make franchise mode awesome, and that's just a nice little touch. You can also now use expansion mode with custom rosters. You couldn't do that before. One thing I know a lot of people are going to be excited about is that expansion mode now allows you to use custom rosters, so that's awesome. You can make a completely wild expansion draft if you want to. Using custom rosters for that is going to allow for a lot of cool stuff for a lot of creative people. Aside from NHL 1s, I think franchise mode is going to be the biggest thing in the NHL series this year. I'm super, super pumped on it. Even in my two or three hours playing it at the Portland event, I had a blast. I was super like in depth with it. I was, it was like something I've never seen before. I'm so used to the regular franchise mode that this was just so different. It took a little while to get used to, I'm not going to lie. But once you, you know, kind of have the grasp of it, since it is so different, obviously you're going to have to take time and realize what things are. There's still some things that I don't even know about, still some things I haven't even touched, but I can't wait to get started. So let me know if you guys are stoked about franchise mode. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I tried to make it as clear as I can. I have a huge list of things, some stuff I even left out. I want you guys to experience it firsthand. That's basically everything you need to know to get up to speed for NHL 19 franchise mode. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. The game drops in a little under three weeks. I can't wait. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you guys in the next video.